Good evening everyone. Myself Gladwin Vijay of S7 ECA. I would like to do a seminar on the topic Embedded System in Automobiles under the guidance of Ms. Sumida Joseph, Assistant Professor of ECE Department. So these are the table of contents. First of all, a brief introduction. Then uh, history. Next one is Automotive Embedded System. Uh, then the working of Electronic Control Unit that is ECE. Then its applications in the Controller Area Network. Uh, then the applications of automotive embedded system. Then explain some of them like airbag system, analog braking system, ACC system that is adaptive cruise control. Uh, then the challenges of automotive embedded system, uh, its future developments, and come to the conclusion and reference. First of all, introduction embedded system in automobiles are the technological backbone of modern vehicles. Seamlessly integrating hardware and software to enhance safety, efficiency, and user experience. These systems control everything from engine performance and emissions to infotainment and advanced driver assistance features, changing the way we drive and interact with our cars. In this era of automotive innovation, understanding the role of embedded system is paramount as they pave the way for smarter, more connected, and autonomous vehicles. Now moving to history, uh, during the 1950s and 60s, uh, simple electronic systems for engine control and dashboard displays began to appear. Uh, by the end of 1970s, electronic fuel injection systems started replacing carburetors. In 1980, onboard diagnostic systems such as OBD1 and OBD2 were introduced. Between 1980 and 1990, uh, some of the applications such as Anti-lock braking system that is ABS and airbag systems were introduced. In between 1920 and 2000, engine control unit ECUs became widespread. Although it was already introduced, it became widespread during this time, controlling various aspects of engine performance, emissions, and fuel efficiency. Uh, by the end of 2000, embedded infotainment systems with touch screen interfaces started appearing. Uh, between the year 2010 and 2020, advanced driver assistance system, systems and autonomous vehicles started appearing. Uh, some of the examples include uh, adaptive tools and all systems, etc. And now, uh, and now, the research is going on the topic vehicle to vehicle communication. Moving on to the automotive embedded system. So basically what are automotive embedded systems? So in the automotive industry, embedded systems are used to control and monitor various functions of the vehicle. These systems are composed of hardware and software that work together to perform a specific function. In the year 1968, Volkswagen has invented the application of an embedded system in the automobile. Examples of automotive embedded system include engine control unit that is ECU, brake systems, infotainment systems, etc. So ECU. The abbreviation of ECU stands for electronic control unit. So what is an ECU? An ECU is an electronic device that is installed in your car and connected to various sensors, actuators, and communication links. It has a microcontroller, memory, input output and embedded software that enable it to perform its functions. It controls all the electronic electronic features and systems in your car from fuel injection to braking to suspension. So uh, basically an ECU was invented uh, mainly to improve the fuel efficiency and to control the pollution. It also monitors various sensors and data to optimize the performance and efficiency of your car. There are about uh, 70 to 100 ECUs in a high-end vehicle. Uh, the microcontroller used is a tri-core tri 32-bit microcontroller, uh, which was introduced to Infineo. The CPUs are available with a processing speed range of 133 MHz to 300 MHz. Uh, the MCUs offer a minimum flash memory of 0.5 MB up to 16 MB. Some of the leading manufacturers 
offices include Bosch, Ford, Siemens, Delco, Delphi, Sagam, and Melco, etc. So, this is the working of an ECU. First of all, it receives input signals from the sensors that measure various parameters of your car. So, the sensors are mounted on the various parts of your car. Then, it processes the input signals using its embedded software and a memory that contain algorithms, routines, and configuration data. Then, it compares the input signals with its predefined values and parameters stored in its memory. Then it calculates optimal output signals based on the input signals and its predefined values and parameters. And finally, it sends the output signal to the actuators that execute its commands and control different features and systems in your car. So, uh, the types of ECUs include engine control module, uh, ABS control module, transmission control module, telematic control module. Airbag control module, body control module, and suspension control module. So these are the main uh, types of ECUs. First of all, engine control module. With the sensors, the ECM ensures the amount of fuel and ignition timing necessary to get the most power and economy out of the engine. Then the ABS control module. It is used in vehicles. With the ABS, the BCA makes sure that the wheels are not skidding and determine when to trigger braking and let go of the brake to ensure the wheels don't lock up. Next one is body control module. The body control module is an electronic control unit that manages various electrical and electronic functions in a modern vehicle's body. The BCM receives input from various sensors and switches located throughout the vehicle's body, such as the headlight switch, power window switch door lock switch and interior lighting sensor in the airbag control module uh, it receives input from the various sensors located throughout the vehicle such as the crash sensors and seat belt retentioner sensors based on the information received the acm determines whether to deploy the airbags and at what level of deployment in the suspension control module it is present in cars with the active suspension systems uh, basically, in high end vehicles, it ensures the correct ride height and optimal changes to suspension depending on the driving conditions. So, these are all the applications of ECU. So, basically, uh, a vehicle works only because of the presence of an ECU. So, there should be some communication between these ECUs. So, the major communication is made through this controller area network. So, a CAN bus is a serial data standard originally developed in the 1980s by Robert Bush for use in automotive applications. It employs differential signaling to provide a high level of immunity to electrical noise. The applications of CAN in automobiles include engine control communication, body control, and onboard diagnostics. A typical automobile today has dozens of ECUs that communicate with each other through various CAN buses. Uh, so the wiring in CAN, it uses twisted pair cables for the connection. Many devices can be connected to the CAN bus. So each device is called a node. Uh, these nodes include such as sensors, actuators, etc. Each node can transmit differentially over two wires, CAN high and CAN low. These CAN buses are interconnected using a gateway network. So on the CAN topology, it is a two-wire bus system to which all the participating devices are connected in parallel. The bus must be terminated at each end with a 120 ohm terminating resistor to prevent the reflections. Since it is parallelly connected, um, the final resistance will be 60 ohm. So, uh, CAN network basically reduces the wiring in a system. So, this figure shows that. So, this is the canvas in the piece. Uh, major issues are connected to the canvas uh, through a gateway network. Coming to the advantages, first of all, low cost lightweight network. It provides an inexpensive, durable network that helps multiple CAN devices communicate with one another. Fast and reliable. It provides fast and reliable data transfer in electrically noisy environment 
at low cost and with minimal wiring since it uses best of all wheel. So there are three types of can, uh, high speed can, low speed can and middle speed can. Uh, the high speed can has a speed of about 500 kbps. So it is fast. Then, then the next advantage is broadcast communication. Each of the devices on the network has a CAN controller chip and is therefore interlinked. All devices on the network see all the transmitted messages. Each device can decide if a message is relevant or if it should be filtered. Then the next advantage is priority. Every message has a priority. So if two nodes try to send messages simultaneously, the one with the higher priority gets transmitted and the one with the lower priority gets postponed. Now moving on to the applications in automotive systems. So these are only some of the applications. Uh, airbags, anti-lock braking system, adaptive cruise control, traction control, black box that is EDR, the navigation systems, rain sensing wipers, tire pressure monitor, seat control unit, backup pollution sensor, etc. So coming to the explanation of some of the applications, first one is airbag system. Uh, we all know that airbags reduce the chances that our upper body or head will strike the vehicle's interior during a crash. The basic idea is that the airbag inflates as soon as the car starts to slow down in an accident and deflates as your head presses against it. So, this figure shows the working of an airbag. So, right in front of our cars, there is a crash sensor. These sensors detect sudden dislocations and electrical signals so that an initiator can be activated. A thin wire provided in the initiator heats up as well as penetrates the propellant chamber. Finally, the chemical propellant undergoes a rapid chemical reaction. This particular reaction results in production of nitrogen gas which fills the airbag. The expanding gas then inflates the airbag in less than a second. So the plastic module covers the open up and inflates in front of the individual who sits in the car. The bag inflates one tenth of a second and after the impact it deflates three tenths of a second. So uh, the inner side of the airbag has a coating of talcum powder which releases after the bag is opened. So the next, next application is anti-lock braking system. Uh, it prevents the wheels from locking when you apply the brakes. It lets you control or steer the vehicle while the brakes remain applied and also reduces the braking distance. The primary components of the ABS include electronic control unit which is, made, which is the main component. Next one is hydraulic control unit or modulator, power booster and master cylinder assembly and a wheel sensor unit. Coming to the working of ABS. So, whenever we apply the brakes, the speed sensors uh, track the decreasing rotation of the vehicles. Then, when the brakes are about to stop rotation, they send a signal to the ECU. The ECU partially releases the brake pads from the wheels through valves and pumps, allowing the wheel to continue rotating. With the ABS, the wheels can continue rotating, allowing you to maintain control over the car uh, during a heavy braking situation. So this figure depicts uh, the difference between a vehicle without ABS and with ABS. So the next application is adaptive cruise control system. So unlike the conventional cruise control, this new system can automatically adjust speed in, in order to maintain proper distance between vehicles in the same lane. This is achieved through a radar headway sensor digital signal processor and longitudinal control. If the vehicles, if the lead vehicle slows down or if another object is detected, the system sends a signal to the engine or braking system to slow down. Then when the road is clear, the system will re-accelerate the vehicle back to its set speed. So this figure depicts uh, on the working of an ACC. First figure shows a car with ACC approaching a slower vehicle. 
when traveling at a constant speed set by the cruise control. So, uh, the second figure shows a car with ACC reduces the speed to match the speed of the slower vehicle in front. So, whenever the vehicle in front slows down, uh, the car with ACC also slows down. So, when there is no vehicle in front, uh, the vehicle accelerates back to its set speed. So, there are challenges uh, about automotive embedded systems. Some of them are safety and reliability. Any software or hardware failure can have life threatening consequences, especially in the case of easy use and the communication uh, using CAN. Next one is complexity. Modern vehicles have become incredibly complex with the numerous ECUs and sensors. Uh, third one is cybersecurity. With the increasing connectivity of our vehicles, they are susceptible to cyber attacks. For example, uh, in the case of vehicle to vehicle communication, uh, there is a chance of lo lo losing our data. Uh, the fourth challenge is power efficiency. Embedded system in automobiles must be power efficient to avoid draining the vehicle's battery and to meet environmental regulations. Next one is cost constraints. As the number of ECUs and sensors increases in a vehicle, uh, the cost of a vehicle also increases. Coming to the future developments, uh, the ideas that may be created would be things like first one is infrared windscreen. The windscreen would display the view of the upcoming road so that on a motorway that the driver could see the road ahead without the lights off. This can reduce the light pollution. Uh, next one may be electric supply roads. The wheels of the car would have a way of taking power from the power lines placed in the road. This would help electric cars to travel further. Uh, next one is car to car communication. As I already mentioned, the car in front may communicate with the car behind and exchange information. Uh, next one is augmented reality. Embedded systems can create augmented reality displays in automobiles. These displays can provide the drivers with useful real-time information such as navigation, speed and vehicle status. So moving on to the conclusion. Conclusion embedded systems play a pivotal role in modern automobiles contributing significantly to safety, efficiency, and functionality. Embedded systems in automobiles have become indispensable, not only for their role in improving safety, but also for enhancing the overall driving experience and enabling the vehicle's future. So these are the references. Uh, the first reference is the base paper that I used. So coming to the end of the seminar, thank you.